Let's learn a little bit about program evaluation. And for our example, let's look at, imagine we're creating a new high school. So in the image, we're seeing a high tech high in San Diego. Imagine we're creating a school like that. Uh, but our new school similarly would focus on uh, increasing student engagement by fostering their passion, which hopefully will lead to a career. And of course, we have a charismatic leader who's our founder or who was hired for her charisma. And she spent the last year uh, canvassing our feeder middle schools, speaking to the whole student body, inviting them to apply uh, because selection will be by lottery of the, of the students who want to attend. So it's sort of self-selection, and why would they want to attend? She tells them, well, you won't be normally studying and taking tests. You'll be doing projects, team projects, and you will have some technology support. You'll each have your own laptop as opposed to the shared computer labs here. You can take the laptop home, and at the end of high school, it's yours to keep. Grades, uh, don't worry about low grades because it's a project. So the project is either complete or incomplete. When you finish a course, it's complete or incomplete. And there's some external funding from local companies who want to create the next generation workforce. So apply and see if you are one of the lucky few. Imagine a year passes and the school and the school board and our community want to know. What do they want to know? Well, what's happened? And, and so who should we get to share this? Maybe the school board or the, or the superintendent says, well, at our next school board meeting, we'll have the school principal here to explain what has happened. And the community and the school board say, no, no, no. Let's hire someone from the local university, perhaps, to do a program evaluation. Why? Because we want to avoid bias. We want this to be an objective study. And oh, by the way, we need this in time for our next budget preparation, so they only have two months to do this. Well, imagine that you are the lucky winner of the contract. And step one is to collect existing data that the school has. So in measures of achievement, we have our standardized test scores. And we have our, our grades from last year and our standardized test scores from this year. We can compare one to the other for student achievement. For engagement, we have attendance records from last year. And this year, same kids. Are they attending better or worse? And finally, uh, behavior referrals. So uh, if, if the discipline referrals are down or up, that tells us something about student engagement. That doesn't tell us our kids engage with their passion, so we'll need uh, surveys, we'll need uh, focus groups, and things like that to add to our study. We'd also maybe, you'd think, well, Aren't there other similar schools around? And can't we see their program evaluation reports, right? So we'd look for similar schools. Would we find one? Similar demographics, charismatic leader, one-to-one -one technology, project-based learning, no grades, external funding. Those turn out to be kind of unique variables. But we'll still find some program evaluation. But typically, Validity and, re and reliability are something we look for in research. But with these schools being so different, the, the validity and reliability of uh, program evaluation typically is quite a bit less. And maybe we'll have significant results, maybe we'll find that in our studies, but really, the people who care are stakeholders, and they don't care about cutting hairs in terms of significance. This is a little bit better than this, and we can prove it. They have different agendas and values. For example, the student wants to know, 
Is this fun? Is it interesting? Uh, the, the teacher uh, union may want to know, uh, what about contracts? Uh, what about tenure? Our, our teachers protected. Uh, these folks may have political agendas. Maybe they don't like the superintendent and all of his initiatives by definition are bad or the opposite. Maybe they want to see innovation, innovation, innovation. Uh, our tech guy here wants to know about the laptops and how are they working out. Um, so a school board person may want to know about uh, achievement and test scores and the rest is not important. And um, some people want to know about the cost and is it cost effective? And uh, our employers want to know, are, are our students prepared for jobs? So the traditional measures are not what will satisfy all of these groups, are they? So our program evaluation design is typically mixed methods. I would think almost mixed up methods because yes, we'll find some data that when we can search for statistically re uh, significant relationships. So in this example, there's strong STEM interest and great engineering attitude, not so bad math and science, engineering knowledge, mm, not so hot. Uh, there's interest in STEM, but for a STEM major, for an actual career, not so much. Then survey results. Uh, so, gee, do kids like having maybe a professional engineer working? So we have to get the surveys, we figure out those. Um, it's a, a kind of a messy situation. And when it's all done, after the two months, you get a program evaluation report to meet the needs of the stakeholders. So if they are interested, uh, obviously they're interested in success, but are they going to be looking at the numbers and looking for significance? Will they be looking at, uh, obviously, results, but will they be looking at surveys and interviews? more than the numbers? Will they want to know success stories or maybe the opposite, failure stories? So it's a program evaluation is quite different from other kinds of research. For example, let's compare to assessment. There, for our standardized tests, we insist on valid and reliable measures. A school needs an, assess an assessment um, program with formative feedback combined with summative evaluation. And then uh, those, that data is collected on the individual student. Compare that with what we expect out of research. In research, we need to isolate the variables so we can tell what contribution each one makes. We can't do that in our school where all the variables are mixed together. In research, we expect to generalize from a sample to a population based on if, if we achieve st statistical significance. The generalizability of a program is limited because each one is a bit unique by school. And then the rigorous methodology that we expect in research means we control the environment and the process very, very tightly. In an active school, that's hard. So program evaluation, yes, it's a formal study, but it's a real-life program with complex, interactive, messy variables. The research controls that we would hope for are typically impossible. The purposes are all over the board from political purposes, cost, benefits, uh, assess, uh, uh, achievement, uh, student passion and engagement. So the success or failure is defined differently by each stakeholder. And overall, program evaluation is not generalizable to a wide variety of schools. It's very difficult to say, oh, it's really successful here. Let's expand it all across the country and, and we'll automatically achieve success.